thank God for the Queen of England. Thank God for Prince Charles. Thank God for Lord Fairfax. The English monarchy has no written constitution. It is interpreted by the monarch, who is the person who's spent most time studying it. And I thank God for that remaining respect to God in a world where there is so much greed, selfishness, all powered by fear. In the Bible, there was a time when they didn't have a king or a leader, and all they had was a prophet or a judge who would be a conduit between God and the people. The people wanted a king to be like the other nations around them. They felt they needed a king. Yet they were warned, if you have a king, you will be judged by the actions of that king. All the people will be. So it was fine when they had a good king. Things were okay. But when they had a not so good king, things weren't so good. So I thank God for Prince Charles. Because I truly believe that he is a good man. He was way ahead of his time on the plastic stuff. Just using his common sense. But those forces who cared more about their wealth kind of won over. There were more of those voices. And that is a long time ago. And now things have changed. We're realising that plastic is a huge problem. Climate change is a huge problem. You know, I made a video a long time ago saying about how, you know, I just think Nibiru is, you know, there was evidence for it. Um, but it's, if it was there, it's gone. Unless we're going to see it on a return journey and go through all this dust, it's possible. And the sun is acting strange, but still can't deny the the result of billions of cars and millions of factories and industry all over the world is going to have an impact on that thin bit of atmosphere that we need to breathe. And everyone is affected by the pollution. You know, I don't live in a city, but the way the air currents move round, as long as you're not currently standing by a busy road, you know, pollution levels are going to be the same pretty much anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Even in Greenland or something. The air gets mixed around. The pollution is equally felt. So if we want to breathe clean air, we've got to stop driving around all the time and having to have big factories and we're just gonna have to ch have rad radical change. You know it has to be done gradually but still it's gonna even have to be radical. 
For example, one of the first things I think should happen right now is that we limit the size of companies. I don't think you should have a company that's more that's bigger than a town of a hundred thousand people, say. There should be no company that, that is that has that amount of power. And let's face it, some of them have much, much more. And you end up with companies that have power over politicians and everybody else. They're the ones running the show. And they're the ones who will continue to rape and pillage the earth until there's nothing left. Purely for digits. Because that's all money really becomes. It's just digits. Yes, it's power. It's power in this world, in this rat race world, and that's the thing we all have to live in. We all have to live in it together. But it truly is the very, very few who are doing all this. And all of us are just trying to pay the rent, perhaps trying to climb up the ladder a bit, get some recognition for something that you've worked hard at. So, you know, we can, we can have really fulfilling lives without all the big industry and without having to travel all over the place all the time. You know, you've just got to think, like, you'd say it's okay to commute to work half an hour or an hour, but, you know, everybody doing that every morning is silly and you know trade and stuff you know well if we can grow something perfectly well here then why on earth should we get it from halfway across the world you know I understand if a ship is going anyway and you can chuck a bit more of this on you know it's not making much more difference but you know wasteful things like that it's got to go. It's just got to go. You know, everyone has, I believe everyone should have the right to travel, to see the world. Um, at least once in their life. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I've done a video before about how I could see the, the future how we would live in communities so that you live and grow up in a community small 150 people you have neighboring communities of course you would interact with those and but your community would be your community and then when you have when you're about 20 you go off go off and explore come back maybe 10 years later and then serve your community with what you've learned and you'd have stories to tell you're made to partner you choose which community you're going to live in your partners or yours you have children, you bring them up in that community and it goes on there would be no hierarchy except age the oldest person being the wisest would have the final say And I think also we should clarify the distinctions between male and female and understand that men guide and women decide is a good thing. It works. So, again, just want to come back to what I started. Thank God for... Prince Charles, he's a good man, and um, unless anything surprising happens, he will soon be the King of England, and Great Britain, of course, sorry, <laughs> and Northern Ireland, and yeah, and we'll be leaving Europe, we will, and if we don't, 
you know. <clears throat> Something needs to be said about our democracy, so consider that we will. And I think we do very well with Prince Charles being King Charles, although he won't be getting involved because his job as a sovereign will change. We all know what he stands for. And I think it could be very good. And I think, you know, it's part of God's plan that um, the nation who has given the world the English language has also hung on to its monarchy, its divine constitution, and is perhaps going to lead the world in a new way. Instead of the grouping together to make super powers like Europe wanted, I think to to break up more and more, smaller and smaller, let communities decide for themselves what ought to be done and how we treat the land and the water and the air. Wood is an amazing thing. You can make a lot of things with wood. There's so many different types of wood. You can't, science isn't going to invent something better than the tree. We don't need to try and reinvent what's already perfect. And nature is perfect. We just have to leave it alone. The land is in need of repair, so initially you'll get weeds and bramble, but the land will improve, and as the land improves it will bring better things. But even then, a tree must could take 200 years to mature to get the best out of it. And the land might need to be left unploughed and ungrazed for the mycelium to grow properly and do its function for the land. So we just have to leave it. We can study it and learn from it. How it works in cooperation. We think it's all competing with each other, it's not. It's just making the most out of what's available. We could see nature as a blank canvas. And with thoughtful pruning and selection, we can make some wonderful art, living art. And it could be done all over the world. get a lot of enjoyment from that and we'd only be doing good to the planet our mother practically in this physical realm so I'm really feeling positive about 2019 Uh, probably not the end of bad things but things have been getting better haven't they wouldn't you agree from where we came from sort of like in 2015 and I don't know 2013 2009 that's that was like 
that was like um, a long time ago. <laughs> so much has changed. It's all gradual change. It's real change. We've still got more to go. <coughs> so, Happy New Year, 2019. Gonna be good. So now, I know I've got more things in my head that I wanted to talk about. And, uh, so I'm just going to make myself a little smoke and just chill for a moment. But I'm going to carry on talking, I think. For those of you who perhaps like to listen a bit longer. I mean, for me, and I don't want to just talk about me, because I know that gets really boring, but I have, I've come across so many truths and, you know, subjects suddenly pop out and I could never have imagined before that that subject would have any bearing or have any interest just it just does um, so the last video I made when I said about um, the yearning the lustful yearnings what was the title of the video I overstood. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'd i figured that I had stopped seeing women as sexual objects. And what I had reached by then was a point where when I felt some engagement with another woman, you know, it might have been on Facebook or just dropping my son off at his mum's or seeing one of my friends and his wife or something like that. I understood that what I enjoyed more, I started to appreciate more the, the connection between someone who's a girl, right, so like a sister rather than a brother. Um, more than, more than the, 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 the temptation to think lustfully of them. But, quite often, you know, something would come into my mind, and it would grab, it would grab me, it would, I wouldn't, I could try, you know, I could sort of, I couldn't, basically, I couldn't get rid of it. You know, there was no, I could get rid of it for a bit, for a bit. Well, but then it would come back, you know, and it would come back on its own, or I would then think, oh, I want to bring that back. You know, I want to bring that back now. So I did, I did feel like it was a, an active sort of connection with someone that was going on. Now, whether they would have been aware of it at the same time or or at all, you know, I can't say. I can only guess that it probably is. And maybe doesn't come out until a dream or something like that. So I felt like I was actively connecting to the person. And that it felt like, or I thought that, 
you know, they wanted me to imagine them in a sexual way. And that would, you know, make me want to go and pull one off and then I, that would release tension and I'd be calmer afterwards, more relaxed and get on with meditating or something. And, you know, because I when on my path dealing with God and wanting to do God's way was not to abstain from all sin and all things bad, but to be honest about my own self and what I want to do. So if it was my desire to imagine punching someone's head, you know, I wouldn't stop stop myself and tell myself off and and um, try and stop it that way. I would look into it, analyse it a bit more. Why? Why do I want to punch this person in the face? You know, why do I keep imagining that and stuff? And, and along the path, you know, I've understood that the loving reaction is always the best. Always has the best outcome. But you can't force it. You cannot force love. You cannot fake love. You might be able to think you can fake it, and you might try and fake it, and fake it to other people. But you can't fake it to yourself. And if you push it away, things will just start coming back. So you've got to look into it and you've got to think. So I'm harbouring some resentment to this person because they hurt me, but you know, if that's in the past, if I want to move on, if I don't want to keep this coming back, I've got to look into it. And when you do that, you put yourself in the other person's shoes. You, you have to see it from their point of view. So. You, you don't always know what sort of life they've had, but you can you can quite soon sort of think of them and think, well, they might have been like a bit like this, you know, and and that would explain why they're now like this, da 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 da. Or you just look at the situation and see that you know it's not all about you. So if the fact someone got me kicked out of something or something, you know, maybe that was. For, for other people as well, you know, it wasn't just about me. So, anyway, this is what I do. So with the, with the thing with the lustful yearnings, and this is how I've been progressing with other things, is I find another possibility. All oh, right, so say with God, all right, so, oh, God could be my mother and father of my soul. Right, and then, bam, that clicks, and suddenly I get this rush from beneath me, this amazing love, and, you know, can only conclude that, wow, that's coming from Mother God, and this beam of love coming from above, and, and the way that feels, it's like, Father, Daddy, that's Father God. And these things make sense. And then two weeks later, I'm feeling a bit funny about something. I, I need God to be there, you know. So many times on this path I've been in that situation. And God has never let me down. If I haven't been able to feel God, it's just because I haven't been in the right mind frame. And in fact, it's ever since I've made that born again connection in September 2014 I haven't not been able to contact God at least something and you know all the stuff I've done all the truths I've felt I've gone with them you know does this work so when I had this thought right so maybe the yearnings maybe the you know what what am I getting from thinking about why does a, a naked body just keep on coming to me what is it you know think about who who designed the human body well God and God designed the woman body so I see a woman a naked body and there's something appealing there 
Now, you can go carnal with it and feel that, you know, like, then I think what I do is, you know, you attribute that to someone and you start a sexual connection with someone. And, um, you know, if you think about all the people that there are in the world, there's always probably a possibility that someone, somewhere, wants a sexual connection at that time. Because it's, it is love. I mean, you're sharing a bit of love, right? But it could be so much more. And when I think about my path and how much I've connected to Mother God over the last few years, you know, I've found it much easier to feel Father God. Feeling Mother God fully was was often more difficult, and and I was getting a lot more of this sort of pain in my feet and sometimes pain on my bum, the connection to the ground. And this does involve stuff with the soulmate, but I'll try and I'll just stay on track for the moment about the lust. <clears throat> so God designed the body and we like the look of it we want we want to see it but it's a feeling that we want now like I said in the last video we all came out of a vagina that's just fact right you were born you came out of a vagina. So if you're thinking of a vagina, well, you know, that's what you came out of. It's, it might not necessarily be that it's just a sexual thing. It's a thing that bore you. So it shouldn't be all, oh, don't go there, don't say vagina. Um, I'm picturing a vagina now in my head, and now I've got to go and have a masturbate. <laughs> Then, we're nourished by the tit, the breast, the big breast, a breast with a nipple, you know. So, you know, of course, you know, that is an attractive thing, to be the breast on the nipple, you know. How many men want to do that to a woman? All do, pretty much. Get that breast into the mouth. When we were born... We knew Mother God very well. Mother, the feeling of Mother God was there. Here, child, here's the, the breast. Take the milk. You need to grow. Right? You're not funny about if you accidentally put your elbow on your mum's fanny area by mistake or something like that. You're not, you're not thinking like that. You're not thinking about that. But, you know, you're, there you are, sucking on your mum's breast. It's not a sexual thing. The mother doesn't feel it as a sexual thing. It's a, a, a providing thing. She's providing for her child, you know, that she carried in her womb for nine months. You know, there's nothing sexual about it. And it's going to stay in you. So I realised it is the yearning to come back to Mother God. This sort of... I get this... So when I'm, if I'm finding myself wanting to uh, picture those sort of things or you just do, it happens and you feel this feeling, it's, most of it is a yearning for Mother God. So I thought, right, so what I do is I take it on and, you know, and I felt some sort of confirmation, that's right, and I was really well connected to Mother God. You go to sleep, you wake up the next day, you know, you can't just, snap it back into it, You've got to go through the process, and it's always different with God. You know, that's one of the things of how you can tell if it's God or not you're dealing with, is never be exactly the same twice. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I run with it, and yes, it's still working, and since then I barely had an erection. I think I've had, I think I had one. And it was because I was watching a film, this 
loads of naked bodies lying everywhere and one of them seemed particularly evocative and I got a reaction for a few seconds. But every time I've thought of one of these people or contact or been in contact with someone or you know, and I felt that familiar sort of tingle of excitement. But seeing it true, that's my sister and what I really want is a connection with Mother God. Now what I've noticed, and I've started to think about how it may feel for the woman as well, differently. Because <clears throat> with my theory, pretty good, uh, it's working so far, about how in the soul the female is enveloped by the male. The male surrounds the female. And we're all in our mother. We're in our mother. So the mother is like containing all her children. And that will always be that way. We're not going to get plopped out into birth. We will remain in our mother. It's just that we will grow. So there will be loads of space. And our father envelops our mother. So with me, with us men, we're sandwiched between two women, whereas the women, they are touching the male, they've got the male on one side, but then what they will have is all their children in them. So a woman is, you know, you start to see them the bigger distinctions. You know, a woman has in her all the children. And, you know, a man does not experience bearing a child inside of him. A woman does. You know, if we've had many, 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 many lives, women have had many, many, many experiences of growing a child within them. Yes, to be given birth, and, and then it's not in the woman anymore, and that is different on the soul level, but it's that practice. So there's so many things that could be talked about. I'll oh, shut. I'm supposed to be taking this slow. So think of it, thinking of it from a woman's point of view is um, is different because. But in the same way, when a woman sees a man who isn't her soulmate. All right, I, should, I probably shouldn't say anything because I've only just thought about this and I'd, so I don't have any good conclusions on that yet. I've just been thinking, sorry. <coughs> but in terms of the soulmate stuff, because this is where it's different. What I mean, and what I had noticed before that is I didn't have lustful feelings for my soulmate. I have had, see I said lustful. So I have had, I have been able to, and it's not so easy, I have been able to get a connection with my soulmate as and and then wanted to you know felt the urge to masturbate and it's been very different but what I will say is also that before when I thought my soulmate was someone else that was also uh, an improvement on the how much orgasm I had and how I felt afterwards because if I've just gone into lust and it often is very quick and often don't even get fully hard and then I feel pretty shitty afterwards I feel like I've done the wrong thing so now what I'm realizing is that lust that it's not so lust is our answer to what we think the yearning is for we think we want sex you know, with anyone, just, you know, nice body, nice face, you know, ideally. Um, people can get into fetishes, it might only be in the mind, might not do it in real life, but they might um, get into rape, 
um, might want to think that the person is dead. Because I know how some people get with their self-esteem. You know, sometimes I haven't been able to masturbate about someone because I just thought they just wouldn't like me, you know? And so, you know, you, if you've got a low self-esteem, you might just think that nobody would like you and you can't... So you imagine having sex with a a corpse, you know? <laughs> Maybe someone who just got run over, <laughs> run over or injected with a deadly uh, virus or something, or, or drugged. Yeah, you might imagine that so that you so that it works that would get over the self-esteem issue there's lots of things that the mind can do to get what it wants get what you think you want I tell you the mind isn't <laughs> you can't trust the mind I mean it's logical it goes through processes but it's not reliable it's not the heart is so I'm jumping I'm jumping around I'm getting excited <laughs> I don't know why. New Year's Eve. Bum, bum, bum. Um, so going back to what I was possibly going to say about with women. So this is this is something I know. Like, so I've been getting closer and closer to my soulmate in meditation. And but I had given up, and I think I've said this, so I'll be brief. I pretty much given up, you know, the physical, because I thought maybe I had this four year thing, you know, coming in four years or something like that. Anyway, so I given up sort of physically meeting her and coming together or something. So I um, I just kind of got back on with meditating and thought, you know, I haven't really been concentrating much on God lately, so I'll I'll do God and I was connecting to Father God. And every time I was connecting to Father God and feeling something, my soulmate would pop up in front of me. Basically, uh, I've always, through my life, I look into a bush, I see the shadows of her eyes. So like the bit under the eyebrow. Like, and it would just, it, and I'd never see, after a certain point, I used to see, I'd have once experienced seeing her whole face and smiling, and even she said my name, and... Ever since then, I've only ever seen the top part of her. It's like the bottom half has been covered. It's like probably something she's put up. <laughs> a barrier, I don't know. Anyway, um, so I was every time I was feeling Father God, boom, I was... And when I say I see her in front of me, really what comes first is the feeling of her. And since I learnt that, on the soul level, she's I, she's in me. She's, you know, she's the fire of my soul in a way. Like she's everything in there, and I and I'm I she's I'm enveloped. She's enveloped by me. And that whole thing about you know, so if I can connect to God, then she can. If I wasn't able to connect to God. Perhaps she could never connect to God. That's possible, I don't know. But that's possible. But anyway, so I was connected to Father God and feeling and then seeing her there. And after doing that, um, I realised a lot of the times I was getting pain in my feet is because I was resisting feeling how she was. Because she's in me, and if I'm going to sit down and meditate, I got, you know, I got to feel the whole thing. I do feel like some, on some level, soul union has occurred. And I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to be giving in to lust. Like I said, it's not overall. It's probably, you know, it's a bit of pleasure and then a bit of not niceness. So all in all, there's nothing really to gain from it. Especially if the person I'm thinking about, you know, is with another partner. 
they're not going to be too appreciative of it. And it's not like you'd say, oh, they, how would they know? I just think people, I just think whether they know or not, I think it comes through. I mean, sometimes I would, uh, you know, there's been a couple of mates I was like really reluctant. I do not want to wank about his missus sort of thing. So I was putting quite a lot of effort to avoid it. But in a sense, it was it was inevitable, you know, that it would come up. You know, it might only be once every few months. But then if you give in that once, then, you know, it's probably going to come up again. Now I'm confident I've knocked it on the head. And I think God will continue to test me on it like God will test me on everything. You know, your faith has to be, I wouldn't say continually tested, but periodically tested. So, yes, continually, but not every second. So I no doubt will be tested on that again. I'm looking forward to, in a sense, to the next test. This is a new thing, and I each time I each time I manage it, and it works. So instead of just thinking, "Oh, I obviously need a wank," um, I'm thinking, "I obviously want to feel some mother love," and as a child soul that I am four billion year old child nothing wrong with that because we're in schooling all our lives all the time and it's about the journey isn't it so moving on to the subject of reincarnation. I haven't really had any new memories from thinking that we've got previous lives on different planets. So let's say we come back to this planet every seventh life or something. But it was making me wonder about, um, you know, how I've been thinking about, you know, if we're in the end times. <clears throat> It was making me think a bit, well, maybe we're, maybe we're not. Maybe there's not really any end times, you know. Why, why are we on this planet for our end times? Why aren't we on the next planet? And Or, you know, is this planet just <laughs> one that acts like it does? I, you know what I mean? I was getting a bit thrown out. I do think we're in the end times. I think we're in the end times that have been spoken about by prophets uh, all through our known history the last six, seven thousand years. Because I, I don't think we can continue, and I've said this for a few years, but you know what I mean? Within a few years, how long can we continue? This phosphorus, we've got 40 years left at the rate we're using it now. Well, we're probably going to be more and more reliant on it as the soil degrades around the world. We are degrading the soil every year. Where we're ploughing and farming, even though we're adding nutrients to the soil, they get washed away. So they're not held in by roots. And roots is what we need, you know, what you see above the ground is what you see, what there is below the ground. So if you're only using that much above the ground, then you're only using that much below the ground. So we need more trees, more roots, and then we can shape, shape how we want it to look. You know, we want to use those trees. So you see a, trees that, a few trees that are clumped together, could do with a bit of airing in there could use that tree to make something useful chop it down do it 
Nothing wrong with that. Leave the land alone. Just let everything be. Observe and learn. You know, pull that twig off there, well, there might have been a beetle that just laid his egg under there. What was the point? Why did he pull it? We've got to be tidy. Well, let's make it tidy. You know, you could have an area that you decided to choose to make artistic and it could be tidy in terms of you know it well, you know where everything is. Anyway. If we don't change. So that's 40 years, make it 20 because we're probably going to use it at a much faster rate as time goes on if we don't change. Uh, ice melting, that's going to continue, isn't it? Quality of the air is going to continue to get worse. So asthma is going to be more prevalent. Uh, mental health will probably get worse because people deep down know the shit we're in. That's the thing, you see, your soul knows, your heart knows. Your heart knows all of this. You don't... you've... Most of us in life have disconnected from our heart. And when you start getting waves of depression, you'll know, well, you might not know, but the reason for that is, is you've disconnected pretty much completely from emotions. So that one will get you. You won't be able to ignore that depressive wave. You want to ignore it, if you're not willing to look at your life and what, you, what you're doing and consider changing. But it's not really your fault because, you know, there's been so much uh, propaganda and everything that the state or the media are trying to tell you how to live your life. Uh, you know, as long as you've got nice, white, clean teeth, you're a winner. You know, that's all you need, <laughs> pearly teeth, so brush your teeth twice a day. You know, and yes, you can't really buy much toothpaste without fluoride, I'm sorry. You know, I don't know how you're going to, you could brush your teeth without any toothpaste at all. But, you know, how many people do that? It's just, you know, might be good, might not. I use a little stick now and then, licorice stick just grows my teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a proud smile, yeah. You know, does it matter? At least if i proud of my yellow tooth <laughs> and, you know, a bit of long gums and yeah, they're long. <laughs> I've got a gap back here. Okay, you know, it's my mouth, I'm the one who has to live with it. Probably not doing all the things ideal. But and maybe that might encourage other people who haven't got perfect rack of teeth to smile. Just it's nice to smile, isn't it? So just smile. And avoid that fluoride because I'm sure that's what's making people dumb. Well, I don't think what it makes you dumb. I think what the fluoride does is it it stops you from being able to enjoy doing nothing. It's uh, if you calcify that pineal gland in there, and that gland isn't free to do what it does. Um, you you can't abide doing nothing, and um, I can certainly remember being like that. Um, whereas now I'm perfectly happy to sit five minutes, ten minutes to wait for something. Um, not all the time. Sometimes I'm <laughs> eager to get things on, but uh, today being Patience Day, I was having to be patient in traffic and some queues. Um, yeah, get off that fluoride. But so it's not really your fault, but the fact of the matter is, is, you know, like I said, if we don't have radical change, these things are going to continue, and then we're going to have 
really catastrophe. But there still doesn't need to be a catastrophe. We still have time to start changing. And I don't believe God is going to wipe us out like he did the dinosaurs. You know, I think when we were dinosaurs, we were pretty basic creatures. And maybe we... Well, I, what I think is that some of us had advanced to take on a mammal, warm-blooded creature. Whether we were involved in inventing the next creature to come along. And God saw, yep, there's enough people now ready to take on these warm-blooded creatures. There's far too many dinosaurs for them to have a decent chance of uh, establishing communities and therefore kind of creating more love and things. So, down with the comet. They won't know what's coming. They won't know what's hit them. Uh, won't do them any harm at all. Whereas now, that wouldn't be quite the same. It, we've had we've had lots of time to consider it. We're beings that are capable of so much more than the dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, based on that, uh, I don't think it's within God's plan to to wipe out um, huge numbers of us. Um, whether we choose to do it to ourselves, it would still kind of be part of God's plan, I suppose. But and we've done that, haven't we? We've had two world wars where millions were killed so I don't think that's going to happen either I believe and have faith that you know there may be a, a large army marching towards and it may look like there's going to be a huge fight but I don't think it will happen I think um, God's plan will come just in the nick of time like always because <laughs> God is a magician with timing and um, all will be well and we'll start to make those changes you know we've already started in a sense you know the first obstacle is knowledge we've been in the information wars they're still going on but the time has turned the worm has turned and people know what's they're, they're getting good with their truth balance and there's enough people who are rejecting the fluoride and pretty much yeah rejecting chemicals I think that's becoming a, a thing that people are accepting you know natural is good synthetics chemicals it's bad I think I do think oil has been a, like a trap you know um, if you encountered oil a few hundred years ago before they knew what to do with it, it certainly wasn't seen as a good thing to have on your land. You know, you could fall into some of these oil things and you'd drown like quicksand. It would be like, but in oil, that's that will have happened to some people. And I think us finding it and turn it into petrol, all part of the plan, all kind of necessary, you know, because I think every avenue needed to be experienced, every an avenue needed to be tried to know what what's what. And I see science has come to, you know, science uses machines, that's what they call, you know, they want it science, they want a machine that can do some dots and some squiggles and you can analyse it and do it again, you can get the numbers, you can see it plain, it makes sense, it adds up, it fits, but it only deals with the physical realm. But we are multi-dimensional creatures, we go to sleep every night, we're on a different dimension, and we all have this soul, we all are a child of God, God is a soul we are in God. So there are these other dimensions. We're on three dimensions at the same time. Physical dimension, a spiritual dimension, and the soul dimension, the dominant one. Sorry, gone off. <clears throat> so yeah, we feel the truth. It is, it is getting better. So that first obstacle, the information,
that all the common people need to know. You know, we got duped by companies. Again, it's mainly companies who are the cause of most of the problems. You know, with their advertising, their propaganda, their greed, their you know, stock exchange, so it's just all about money and dividends and and they get so big and they just swallow up smaller companies so what you end up with just huge companies right so we got duped with the um, climate change stuff you know I knew one of the persons who wrote a book it was a lecturer at Southampton University, Climate Convergence, and so they came up with the idea that, well, you know, for developing countries, they should be able to pollute a bit longer, because we in the developed world, we had already done, like, loads of pollution, and now they're developing, that if they're not allowed to pollute, or well, they can't be expected to have the money to buy solar panels and stuff like that, right? But really, we just got duped because then all these big companies, you know, instead of continuing their industry in the Western world, um, where they weren't allowed to pollute, they just moved all the stuff to developing world, where they could pollute as much as they wanted. So we didn't actually cut pollution at all, probably increased it, and, um, you know, having a place like China where got a billion people who just do what they're told uh, basically living like slaves as far as it seems um, you know and then so business carried on as usual basically things carried on as usual uh, just continued to get worse um, and I suppose the only way you know, you got these people like me, you know, in this country who will be a hippie and do little things here and there. Um, yeah, that is a positive. It is a positive because it's, it's showing examples. Um, maybe mine aren't the best, but there's rewilding things going on all over the place. And, you know, people are getting the right idea. Uh, so, yeah, they're the positives. But... You know how are we gonna how are we gonna say okay t uh, turn off turn off the machine? Well, I think, like I said at the beginning, that rule limit the size of a company. No company should be bigger than fifty thousand employees. Net profits no more, and this is before dividends and bonuses. Net profits no more than. 500 million a year you know so that is like a small town and that should be the limit no company bigger than that and the most well paid person in the company should get no more than 10 20 times more than the lowest paid person in the company you have those rules you enforce them so if a company wants to get bigger than that they'll have to split that means they'll have two boards two chief executives so you know, you're not coming together and companies coming together all under one board, one chief executive. You'll have more boards, more chief executives. And because, you know, running your own company is great. You get all the rewards of your hard effort. If it is hard effort, you get the rewards of your efforts. And you're, you're flexible. You can you can run it the way you want it you can try out your ideas and with all people doing that all around the world you know we're going to come up with some good ideas yes we might not be able to manufacture a barrel of a gun but do we need a barrel of a gun no that would be the second rule <laughs> if I was ruler of this country I would say we're going to abolish our defences 
we have no defences. Do you not think it's time 2,000 years later, after that man said, love your enemy? And shouldn't, I've tried it. It works. It's amazing. It's very good. We were all doing that. Do you really think we need a defence force? I mean, we would have some apologies to make this country. And we would... Imagine it. Imagine the country goes defenceless, right? So you're only... So if someone wants to drop a nuke on us, they can drop a nuke on us. What are they going to gain from that? Well, <laughs> maybe... Maybe it would stop some of the dodgy business deals that goes on in this country. So probably first, what we need to do is get our house in order. And make sure we stop doing things that are evil and causing other people's harm. And yes, we, 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 right, radical change is needed. It, whatever change it is, even if it's going to be gradual, it's going to have to be radical. You just have to get people together and think how these things can be done. This is what we want to work towards. We want to work towards not needing any sort of defence force. All right, what else are they going to do? Come on, uh, landers, and land on our beaches and start jogging up and with machine guns and bossing us all around what to do. Well, we're a free country. You know, th in the future, right? We all got our small businesses and we really like our life you know you come in with your rules we are not going to be happy it's not as though we're just gonna let just let you and we're if we're doing this we'll be we're on the right side of God so we'll have God on our side that's that's a huge help so it would be fine and other countries that would then take suit they would see what we were doing and they would they would imitate it because it's a bloody good idea. <laughs> and it's what we need to do. There isn't going to be any other way. There's only going to be one way. Anarchy. No rule. Peaceful anarchy. So we're not going to need to make barrels of guns. And I think we can live without 3D printers. You know, one of the best things you can have in the world is a good home-cooked meal. With vegetables grown up your garden and cheese that you made yourself from your own cow. Eggs. And... Maybe now and then, you would kill one of your animals and eat the meat. And use everything in that animal. Everything. I want to make some drums, right? I want to make some drums. I need guts. Sheep guts. I want to make a guitar. Right? I'm going to need some of those intestines. <laughs> for the strings. So... You know, and I mean, I like making stuff out of wood. I'm not very good at it because I haven't had the practice. I usually I get the timber from wicks, you know, square and easy. But now I'm sort of using, you know, the council keep cutting trees down, and then when I notice them, there's a bit of wood, I'll go and pick it up and hack it up and try and make planks and get the old plane out and put something together but usually they cut them too short and need longer things to make better things but it's um it's really i love getting into that connection making that connection you know enjoy that i remember one time i was 20 i'd gone to live in norway so i'd given up the old cannabis and i was you know depressed really and uh, my uncle asked me to help him with dinner. And he had the fish, big salmon in the sink. And he was like, give it a wash, get all the slime off it. 
and just by connect touching that fish and connecting with it just you know I don't know at that time how long it had been since I had connected with my food in that sort of way I really dismissed food I didn't think I needed it <laughs> at the age of 20 um, you know brown food I could have eaten just brown food all the time dead food but connecting with this fish really cheered me up So I'm getting some pain in my feet. How long has this been? Over an hour. I haven't done one over an hour in ages. Sit up straight. So, um, yeah. Everything I do is about soul. I got, if I've got some pain in my feet because I've been sitting there for so long, it's more op it's an opportunity to feel something. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm getting to recognize if it's something from my soulmate or if it's something from God, but most of the time I don't know. And I just, um, until I've had the feeling here in my heart, in the core of me. And there's so much to learn, you know, and I suppose on this journey I kept thinking, you know, am I going to get to a point where I'm now finished, you know, I'm not. I have lots of eureka moments, some bigger than others. Um, and I think it's had an effect when I take on a new truth and I feel it, I feel that truth and some of them have been huge. Like really big, and that may have changed the world. It's a possibility. It's like they say, we're like we're all connected in some way. Um, they say, don't they? If they learn, if a, a a chimp learns a new trick, apparently immediately, all chimps in the world are then would be able to learn that trick really quickly. There's something in the genes, I think, and that we're all connected on that level somehow. So, because I, I was thinking, you know, yeah, I'm not the Christ and stuff. And I kind of remembered at one point these things I'd done, and I thought, shit. Not everyone's going to be able to do that. Not everyone is, I'm not saying you wouldn't be able to, but you're not going to have the circumstance, the time, the, the run up to that conclusion, the everything that needs to, and then the willingness to sit through it even though you think you're going to die. Many times. And I'm thinking, you know, is my son going to have to do that? And I and I know I don't think so. I think I think I did it. I was motivated to do it. I felt like it was the right thing for me to do, so everything was pointing together. That gave me the motivation to stay in it and carry on. And the next person who does it they're gonna find it easier than that, I think. It's gonna come easier because I've done it. So, with God's help, I've saved the world. But I shouldn't say that. I should say, I've helped God save the world. And I'm not the only one. You know, we've all got a different thing to do. And what I did was just as hard for me as probably what you have to do will be as hard for you but we'll all be doing different things 
and you're the only one who's going to know your thing and I'm the only one who knows my thing and so I don't want to claim that I saved the world and expect the credit for it because because I can see that everybody is doing their thing to save the world so yeah and by the way there's no way Prince Charles killed Diana no way it's not a royal job of course they would be the first suspects and that alone gives somebody else an opportunity to frame somebody and even this person who I've mentioned before doing his bit and it's not like we're done we're all in different stages and we're all four billion years old and this is just one moment in time two billion years ago probably things were on their head in terms of the stages we were at and maybe you're in a stage now where you're pretty far at the back of the queue or you're in a stage now where you are pretty near the front of the queue and it might be your turn next to be at the top <laughs> I don't know how long each person is at the top four or each person is at the bottom four and I guess most of the time we're going to be in the middle but where you are you are so wherever you are you are and we all together are growing if it took us four billion years to get to the stage where we could start to become fully aware of what we truly are and it's not going to be a, just a quick thing it's going to go on it's going to be going on It's all good. <clears throat> it's all good. I'd like to say something about religions. Um, I've said before, I think they're all wrong. All of them are wrong. But they're all got something right. I think that. I think there's a place, I think there's something that they've all found, including Scientology, science, if you want to call it that. Including technocrossy, technocrossy, whatever they call that. Whatever it is, Muslim, Christian, Catholic, Mormon, Jehovah's Witnesses, Sikh, the sort of native Indian, Native Americans religions, South Americans religions, the Aboriginal religions, the African religions, Many of them call it God. <clears throat> Some of them sort of don't. <laughs> they all bring something, I feel that. But they're all wrong. None of them have it 100% right. And I think the only 100% right religion is your relationship with your mother and father. And I say that includes with your soulmate too, so you're sort of a, a family unit. 2.2. .2. 
And that's the only 100% true religion. Only you can know your religion. You don't have to give it a name. But I do think there is a hallowed name. So that's something I feel the Christian brought. And that name to call upon your mother and father, I believe, is Jesus. The Jehovah's Witnesses claimed that the end of the world times were beginning in 1900. And they believed that Psalms, which goes from 1 to 149, I believe, or is it 150 maybe? Oh, the number of humans for a tribe. That's interesting. Something else. <laughs> Whether the writer of this knew any of this at the time, or whether it just came out spiritually, you never know. But they felt that, so Psalms 1 is about 1901, Psalms 2 is about 1902. Now it's quite interesting, Psalms 117 is the shortest, I think it's the shortest chapter in the whole Bible. It's very, very short. And 217 was, I think, that was a tough year. For me, anyway. For men, perhaps, as well. 2018 was pretty general, normalish. And two and Sorry, Psalm 118. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. And I read it last night, and it kind of repeats itself a lot, so I won't read it for you. But it goes on about how going forth, you know, putting the trust in God and whatever will come our way, we'll deal with, um, with God, you know, God's will be done and, and all that. And, and I think that's, <laughs> I think it's pretty apt for the year we're going to have, although I have no idea what sort of year we're going to have. I have a fit well, I do have an idea. I think it's going to be good. At least I got a really good feeling about January, and I know that the women are going to be coming up, and they're the ones who tend to manifest things. So I think it's going to be a good year. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't really want to predict. I just want to continue to watch things unfold. And uh, my feet are really on fire now. I would usually at this stage start to feel something. So I'm just going to do that. Hang on. You know, the longer you sit, the more intense it can be. And there's always situations I just where I just can't take anymore, you know, and I have to get up. There's no point beating myself up because we've got so much time. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We really have got so much time. And things will be improving for us, even if we die and we go into the next life. You know, humanity is going to have moved on and you're going to have a better childhood, a better bringing up than it was before and you'll get onto the truth quicker next time and don't have any fear that you're just repeating things over and over and not learning God is God is good at this <laughs> it may be the first time that God's ever done it but God will have had plenty of time to study what God had Anyway, God's got it in hand. You know, who knows how long existence has been going, whether it's infinity or not. Well, I remember, time is just a concept. We're always breaking new ground. 
it's new, and it's the women who are at the forefront. They are at the, if you like, the newest level, because, you know, I'm right next to Mother God, and then in me is my female soulmate. She's, so she's in between me and God, and she's on the new frontier. 